up everyone, Dino here, welcome back to the channel, today we're gonna react to the 14th episode of Eminence in Shadow. So last time, and I got pissed last time because as just well, Studio Nexus did some unnecessary changes, like many stuff, futuristic stuff, which are, you know, not in the, end, in the series. Secondly, uh, there are many things. There are many things that I hated about it, especially the way they uh, mix, uh, show what the story is all about, the history and everything. They did it in the combo this Nika, so my spider, so what, and that way by last dungeon style, which is not true in the novels. And yeah. <laughs> The only thing I have to praise them is um, they included the two elves from the web novel, the Tan one and the Taciturn one, and basically the little sisters of Epsilon. Although the real one, the protege of the protege of Epsilon, still has to show up soon, but I don't know if if we'll ever get to that. Point, but I don't think we won't because we're just gonna add up two books and the fourth. I think yeah, I think this episode will be the last one for this arc and episode 15 all the way to episode 20. I think I think that would be dedicated for the uh, second half of volume two, which is the P arc. I will, I will just uh, I will call it P O arc, the arc for P O. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Okay, Eminence and Shadow, episode fourteen, and three, two, one. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this part also pisses me off. This shot was nice. This sh this this still shots was nice, but the way this the way this scene happened just really doesn't sit well with me. Mm-hmm. That's not how well you're portraying him some kind of vampire, but that's not how it happens. He didn't do it in the back, he hugged her like crazy. He did uh Sid did the crazy hug of that here, not this way. <laughs> okay, let's skip the opening. The funny thing is... He did not throw his sword. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mhm. Mm more Olivier. Who can't use his magic? Yanka <laughs> shoddy copy. Hmm. 
True. Hey. <laughs> I'm a mass production, Olivier. Time's up. Mm-hmm. The thing is, he, the sword, the broken sword, he used that as a base for his slime sword. And that was an even more epic. Okay, they're making epic poses again. They're framing it in an epic way. For any human being. <laughs> yeah. Time's up. Destroy the magical core, yep. Time to skip everything. <laughs> yeah. It's time to skip everything and just go full atomic. <laughs> hey. I mean, he is your destined one. <laughs> oh. Atomic. <laughs> oh my god, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> Uh, that was awesome. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Everything's gone. There's Alpha and everyone. Goodbye, holy land, Linworm. <laughs> That right there is a literal atomic bomb. <laughs> Mana explosion wise. No radioactive leftovers. Just pure <laughs> destruction. <laughs> Without the after effects. And we're not even half the episode yet and they just end it this way. <laughs> Yep, that's the truth. There she is, best girl. If you've read a uh, web novel, best girl, best girl. I mean, Akane is so far the strongest heroine in K in terms of develop character development. Second would be Alpha, but. Aurora is the best of them all. Yep. Best girl. Stir up. Stir up. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Best girl.
Let's said, say it. Good. Say it, said. Say it, said. Say it. Oh, come on. Come on. They did not say it. Shadow. Yep. Hey, this is an or This is uh, something. Manga, manga. Oh, wait. It also happened in the novel. True. True. Man, Rose is sporting that uh, mother who's going to die, Luke. <laughs> Come Mm -hmm. And what about better? Mm -hmm. Join forces, fight back. <laughs> Making your own order. <laughs> Gather information first. Yeah, true. But an outline of a plan is would be nice too. Yeah. <laughs> and it's something red, yellow, blue. Uh, red, uh, Alexis, the red. Blue is better. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and rose is the yellow. Our typical precure colors are here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dead weight. <laughs> no, you. <laughs> the passive aggression between the two is just, just damn amusing. <laughs> Vaporize. Vaporize. Jokets. We walk as well. True. You guys swore yourself to it. What is the? What are those? Oh, there's a wine. Diablos. Yep. You know. Please. <laughs> he knows everything. <laughs> also, um, they should play the prologue now. The prologue for the second half. The fourth arc. The prologue. Yes, they are. Nice. Sure, Gamma. Big old. <laughs> it's a holy shirt. 
Rest in you. She's supposed to be in the back. Madrid. <laughs> Not Madrid, but Madrid. Rest in you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, now I know what you're talking about. Slum. Every property. Greatest in Valgalta. <laughs> Big Alta. At Valgalta. Nile River. <laughs> Uh, I mean, they're just doing things that shouldn't be. Oh, here comes Zeta. Hey, girl. And there's Zeta. Still... Just... Okay, we're going for the... The side stories now. And she's gonna hunt for a boar. We're here. <laughs> Two by four. <laughs> I mean, this is not their base. This is not supposed to be. I mean, I mean, no. This is not what happened. I will explain it to you. This is uh, volume 3 stuff. I will clarify this one. <laughs> okay, sure. This is not the real thing. Yeah. I will explain it later. This is the musings of... This is Alpha's musings in Volume 3. Or the first part of Volume 3. No one who killed him. Hey, boobs. Yes, yes. <laughs> Pen service again. This is the second time. Ooh, mm, that's a nice bank. Nice arch. Nice one, Alexia. <gasps> Thighs. 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 Yes. No. Don't make a move. Yep. A reasonable approach. Mm -hmm. Damn. That's a nice line right there. Nice one, Iris. Nice focus. <laughs> They're using this to, f to do feelings. 
Why? <laughs> There's there is someone. Well, the artifact one and the academy was thing. That was not an artifact. You know that wasn't an artifact. That was not a line you said. <laughs> That's a changed thing. <laughs> uh, well well you did you wanted to level <laughs> negligence sure oh I shot <laughs> yeah they died so fast Well, <laughs> oh, we got we got a prologue. It's supposed to be a dojo, not outside. Ass shot. A very welcome ass shot. <laughs> this fucking idiot, man. Ah, there it is. Although they changed it. Okay, that's the end of it. Okay. Okay, that was the 14th episode of Kagina Jutsurikchan in Naritakte. Emerson yeah, Shadow. First thing first. Yeah, it fast. <laughs> The only thing left to do is, you know, <laughs> that anyway. <laughs> um, it's the end of the third arc, which be which just basically thing majigi shadow expo exploding things and intimate talks with Aurora in the final part, the epilogue. So yeah. Um, okay there we go so yeah this part this is funny um this this is different from the novel the thing is after olivier managed to get the stab what sid did was gave her the death hug like like this not on the back but on the front and then he started chomping on her carotid artery <laughs> and even even nelson was disgusted because this is even more disgusting than what delta did to his clones earlier <laughs> what did that was even more insane in front of him uh, to him at least like they were doing he was doing the hug of death on the front not on the back secondly <laughs> yeah or our story fight here and yeah what's what part of it yeah <laughs> even also cannot comprehend the absurdity of everything <laughs> and yep there's there's everything also he did not throw his sword away from here 
he's still using his broken sword so when the every <coughs> copies of Elvir spawn he basically declared that yep i've got my magic back <laughs> and then his he used this broken sword as a basis a hard um handle basis for his slime sword and then just start chopping each one of them and you know what happens i have to say though that the the i am atom i am all range atomic here was freaking dope 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 as hell this scene was freaking dope as hell and <coughs> uh that's the end of it of that fight basically an all range atomic and the purpose of that was he he committed a literal genocide right there it's not just like he obliterate, obliterate, uh, obliterated things he was full on intent in va uh, vaporizing everything around that area because that's what's the point because the holy sword cannot be pulled the way to do it is vaporize it and it needs a huge firepower to do it and yeah atomic everything <coughs> everything vaporize the sword the chains the remaining arm of the remaining of the left arm of diablos which is revealed here to be aurora herself um that's basically what uh a if the possession is basically uh, the descendants turning into a blob of meat, um, the Yablos herself is that, but the opposite, where she managed to take control of her own being and just turn into a rampaging monster instead. So, yeah. So, here we go. Um, yeah, everything all rich atomic, everything was vaporized, everything here was vaporized in the entirety of Linworm. I mean, not the entirety, but the Sanctuary Mountain thingy majigi got destroyed. That was the point of it. And there's, yeah, here we are in this scene with Aurora and Sid. The two of them being intimate as hell here. They, they have so much um, OTP energy right here and the first time I read it in the web novel I basically yeah I ship them I, they are the strongest ship for me right there although Aurora is mm, gone the Aurora right now is gone but part of her still exists in the world she said it herself and that's why I'm a bit disappointed that in here, in here, Sid did not say it, but in, in the anime at least, but in the novels and in the manga, uh, he finishes what Aurora said. If you ever find the real me, please kill me. That's what, that's the wish of Aurora herself. That's something that got omitted right here. It's not a spoiler or anything. That's the thing. They omitted it. So I'm giving you... Um, I'm giving you... How do you call this? <laughs> context. To what was missing. So I was wondering how they're going to fill up the... Uh, 10 minute... 12 minutes... Uh, 12 minute... Uh, this, this parage of... The ending of the third arc. And... The fourth arc itself, which is shown at the end, I will sh I will sh I will show it what's all about. So yeah, this here is the pack made by the three. That's okay. Some that's something in the that's some uh, that it is something that happened. Yes, true. And I just love the amount of passive aggression right here. <laughs> yes, because Natsume and Alexa just doesn't get along. As usual with the red versus blue <laughs> they don't get along rivals that doesn't get along but are on the same boat <laughs> and here and yeah, they're talking about the sanctuary gone the holy sword gone the remain samples of diablos gone 
the most effective and the most simplest solution there is and shadow does that anyway <laughs> and here this is something that or anime as far as i remember this is anime only because well mitsugushi is spread currently in the world and of eminence and shadow they are widespread around and the thing they're talking about here is petrol mm, petroleum gas anyway fossil fuel for this they have not developed this thing yet as of so far in the novel during this part in the timeline they have not but they are researching into it this is something that yeah and this is uh, also this you saw this in the trailers for this anime we have zeta here she is an explorer yes she is she does things we have uh eta being the uh being the brain decoding planning engineering everything that's her work she, her literal work is intelligence not necessarily just engineering and stuff there will uh it's not gonna be adapted but eta did a huge contribution in the fifth arc after the next arc on this one and yeah <laughs> this is from the side story <laughs> where delta was just being feral and hunted the boar down <laughs> and she basically like i brought a i brought a boar <laughs> everyone let's freaking eat and she just got reprimanded by alpha <laughs> Uh, it's cute delta is cute and this here this is something that happened on the six arc um we can see alpha here reminiscing as she sees everyone here in the in the place she saw everyone and she's reminiscing here this is not true this is not true two by four <laughs> yes he said sid said here two by four what originally they did was that alpha and sid uh, after alpha got saved by sid the first thing they did was training a bit with swords and the like and they basically built a small tree house um yes i will i will i will talk about this since they show this one already in the anime and I'm showing, telling you that no, this is not the house they've made. They've made a house, a tree house in a remote area in the forest. Um. So yeah, all Alpha always reminisce about the smell of wood, and when she does smell, she, she can whenever she does smell the smell of wood, she always reminisce about the day she got saved. The first time she was taught about um she was taught about swordmanship she was she was taught about magic the slime everything the the cult of diablos the possession the history of everything that's to alpha size but we know that sid was just bullshitting <laughs> Maj uh crew entire that although he was correct he was just bullshitting anyway it's not modern house it's a two by four tree house in a random tree and then sid was this is basically every uh <coughs> basically by day sid is not there for alpha <coughs> okay sorry the tree house was not built perfectly there were still some lacking parts of it so sid basically taught alpha how to build the tree house and by day alpha would train with swords and then slowly work on the tree house and by night sid comes with food with him and both of them eat inside the tree house basically a between two 10 year old children <laughs> a date in the woods basically and yeah as and she was also taught farming and everything hunting 
Alpha was taught everything, every every knowledge of her. Um, th- then, uh, sometime after she was, uh, she was saved. They basically also spotted Beta. Uh, well, bit Beta before Beta was Beta, and they save her. And yeah, I, w- I would not talk about the attitude of Beta beforehand because that's some spoiler for the fifth arc. She, I w- I w- if they ever animate that part, I will let Beta do it herself, her backstory. Although I don't trust them anyway because they already failed with Epsilon <laughs> and they, I'm sure they will fail with Beta anyway. So yeah, and there's Beta and then sometime after... Um, Sid and as uh, Sid and Alpha managed to rescue Gamma, who was dying and who was extremely fragile and weak. And then, yeah, Gamma laments a lot about her because every per- uh, every personal in the Seven Shadows itself have their own specialty. Except Alpha being the jack of all trades, master of everything anyway. <laughs> Subversion of the jack of all trades trope. Yes, yes. Alpha is a perfect superhuman according to her friends and fellow members of the Shadow Garden group. So yeah, there was Gamma, rescued Gamma, then Saptor after Delta, when Sid and... Alpha was walking together in the snowy woods. They basically spotted Delta anyway. <coughs> and that's how... Yeah. Yeah, it's also tie earlier where we see Alpha, uh, Delta on the ta- top portion of the building. Where she was going out and then just start hunting anyway. Um, that's a side story about Delta. How Delta got recruited anyway. So they omitted that part. And then... There's the part with Epsilon and then we got um, we got Zeta and then Eta and that's how everything this the Shadow Garden Seven Shades is composed of sev- uh, five elves and two beastmen three and ropes and <laughs> basically the and since the seven shades are the first seven are basically growing in number Alpha work hard to expand the treehouse making more par- uh, area for farming etc blah 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 and that's how, that's that's the place where they live the seven of them um it's a expanded treehouse in the middle of nowhere where only sid where sid only goes in through the night and yeah they're some of the other characters in the seven shades was uh, had different attitudes from before and they all got closer with sid during each visit from the night and you know we have everything beta with her stories gamma with the knowledge of the <laughs> businesses um epsilon well the slime zeta if you know if you can see it from the here in this episode, she was a explorer, the thingamajiggy, and Ata, the knowledge of engineering, just being the best when it comes to using brain. Well, there's Alpha anyway. Powering Alpha, Ata is the smartest among them all, and the wisest would be the Gamma would be the wisest because she knows how to use that wisdom. Uh, Zeta would be uh, Delta would be the strongest uh, fighter. Epsilon would be the technique, the strongest technique user. Zeta is the support type, the guerrilla fighter. Anyway, of the good team. And yes, what uh, what do we talk about? Oh yeah, the, we have the sauna scene between Alexia and. Alexa and Iris, <laughs> too much fun service and too much ties, especially Iris. <laughs> I like Iris a lot. Um, in the novel, she gets a lot of flack for her attitude anyway, but I like Iris a lot. Although, yeah, she can be very, very 
am unflexible <laughs> but that's her charm anyway i like her i like iris a lot and during this um sauna scene uh, it did well in establishing the character for iris something that she will struggle with and something she will face with in the further down the line is sorry and that's good that's good they characterize it nicely here and that's something good job i guess to do nexus <laughs> and yeah there which part yep okay here we are on the prologue of the po arc or if you have already guessed it it's called the princess oriana arc and first of all she's not doing this under this place she was doing it in a dojo in a gymnasium dojo or within the school <coughs> she was all alone she was in her shirt her formal attire you know the dogi dog she's wearing her dogi practicing her swordmanship it's she was not thinking about um she was not thinking about shadow during that she was thinking about her many thoughts around it especially her own family and the reason and i think i will leave it to the anime to explain what's the deal with the oriana kingdom and rose being in midgar kingdom doing swordsmanship and what's all the more about oriana kingdom because this is the princess oriana arc and she is the center point next episode in the next arc and she was not thinking if i remember correctly yeah she's not thinking about shadow here she was thinking about something else and she was thinking um i think she was th oh, oh no i think she did think about sid about trying um trying uh there are many things she's thinking about say if i remember correctly around here but yeah she was not and then there hap there it happens this <coughs> one thing about the possession is it's not something like this like some kind of branching nerves expanding and everything like a crack um possession is more of a necrosis like like rotting skin uh, decaying along those lines that's what possession usually how usually it appears and that's how it appears also in rose right there in the end of the episode and this then having possession itself is basically like this is how the life of new got you know turned around oh boy it's gonna be a heartbreaking arc it's emotional and i very much look forward to it and yeah that's pretty much it like if you like subscribe down below comment what do you think are you excited for the next arc and everything so yeah see you guys next time bye